Welcome back. Today we're celebrating people from across the country who are sharing their talents, just like this creative woman in Arizona. And voila, you have a pillow. <laughs> this is Francis Chenoweth's new pandemic hobby. This machine does everything except talk to you. She's sewing pillowcases. Because I needed something to do besides sit around the house. Her family was trying to find ways to keep her busy and safe during the pandemic. Her days are usually packed with activities. I mean, I do ceramics and all kinds of things and, you know, go to some of the plays and things here, but I haven't been many places. They heard about Ryan's case for Smiles, a nonprofit started in 2007 that aims to comfort and support children in hospitals around the country. Volunteers sew vibrant, fun pillowcases. Best part of it is because I think I'm doing something constructive for someone else. The Phoenix chapter has been around five and a half years. Volunteers have sewn and delivered more than 50,000 cases to several Valley hospitals, including Phoenix Children's, Scott Solche Medical Center, and a few Banner hospitals. It makes me feel really good. It does. Her daughters-in-law are now constantly on the lookout for new fabric. And then I backstitch everything. In a few months, Chenoweth has made 80 pillowcases. I think it's just fun to watch her grow and think, you know, I may be 94, but I can still do amazing things. And she has. We're like blown away by her. Chenoweth says it's been fun and rewarding. And even if things start to open back up and she can get back to her activities. Well, the way things are going, I may keep on doing it. <laughs> This is where Charlotte sews happiness. They really fall in love with these dolls. 12-year-old Charlotte was born with a cleft lip and palate, a birth defect that leaves a split in the roof of a baby's mouth. A lot of anxiety knowing that your child was not going to be born perfect and um, all of the hardships and pain that they'd have to go through. Charlotte only months old when she underwent her first of many surgeries to fix her smile. I always had a stuffed animal to keep with me while going through the surgeries. When she turned seven, Charlotte received a sewing machine and from the minute she got it, she was ready to sew. And right away, I made my first doll that looked like me. I put long brown braids in it and glasses, and I even added a scar. That small scar inspiring Stitches by Charlotte, where she hand makes surgery companion dolls for kids who have matching scars or even an eye patch. There's a little boy, Theo, who he didn't want to wear his eye patch for medical reasons. And once the mom put an eye patch on the doll, Theo wanted his eye patch on too. During the pandemic, Charlotte shifted gears, making hundreds of masks for nurses. When the pandemic started, I realized that I needed to stop producing dolls and start producing masks. The whole family, grandmas were involved cutting fabric, and Charlotte was just a machine, just behind the sewing machine for hours a day. That little scar inspiring so much happiness for healthcare heroes and young children battling the odds who can now hold a doll that's just like them. A lot of a comfort to know that like out there, there is a doll that looks like me. This Kentucky guy is sharing his talents by knitting it forward. Inside the Third Street Stuff coffee shop in Lexington, you can often find Chad Compton knitting. But the click of the needles is quite relaxing, and I usually use wooden ones. He may not look like what most people think a knitting enthusiast might, but he loves it. Knitting has been part of Chad's life for nearly two decades, starting when he underwent multiple surgeries. And when I was trying to recoup and recover from those, I'm like, I'm not going to be that kid that sits and plays video games all day. I'm not going to do any of this stuff. So I ended up uh, teaching myself to knit. He knits hats, scarves, and blankets for himself and loved ones. But after all these years, he wanted to find a way to use his talents for the good of others. You know, I, I make a lot of stuff for people and they never wear it. And I'm like, there has to be a place I can give it to so somebody can get use out of it. So in 2018, Compton started the nonprofit Knit It Forward. He based it off a similar charity he learned about in Oregon. He relies on knitters in the community to donate creations to those who are in need of a little comfort or warmth. But it's just to make someone feel that little moment of somebody cares for me. You know, there's love, there's hope, there's warmth in it. That's the concept. Anyone can donate supplies, hats, scarves, or squares that he can stitch together to make blankets, all of which go straight to nursing homes, assisted living facilities, or even those who call the street their home. 
I can tell when the same people leave it because they have a signature style with their knit and their yarn choices. There are donation bins set up around the community, including at Third Street Stuff, where people can drop off or pick up free supplies for the taking. A community effort, a simple idea, one that can make a big difference. I'm going to make this world a little bit better when I leave it. <laughs> We have more talented people to meet, and this young lady is so fabulous. So fabulous, because it's like a play on words, like so fabulous. I mean, I knew that she was fabulous from day one, so it's great as a mom to see her realizing how fabulous she is. Her talent is inspiring and definitely good to know.